Welcome to another edition of The Nate Moore Show. Our show is being brought to you by Reliable Heating and Cooling. I'm your host, Ripley Kemp. Joining me is the head coach of the Maslin Tigers, Coach Moore. Coach, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me on. Another big win for our Tigers last Friday night as Maslin defeated St. John's from Washington, D.C., 28-7. to Your thoughts on the big win? Um, happy for the victory. Uh, happy with how our kids played. I thought we went out and, and played hard and um, made enough plays to win. The game was stopped with about six minutes left in the fourth quarter. Can you explain to our viewer, viewers why the game ended early? Um, I got called to the middle of the field. The referee thought that uh, recommended that we end the game uh, early. Game can only be ended early by mutual agreement of both head coaches. And, uh, you know, since we were ahead, it, it, to me, it was really up to the other guy. And, um, and he, he wanted to end it early, so I concurred. The Tiger defense held the explosive cadets offense to just one first quarter touchdown. Let's focus this week on your defensive backs. Tell us more about those guys and their coaches. Well, um, we have a really nice group of defensive backs. Um, our two safeties are Ryan Page and Tyler Hackenbrack, and uh, both those guys do a really nice job for us. Um, and then a, a corner, um, you have Adonis Vaughn, who's done a nice job for us also. Um, Zach Liebler has been our other starter most of the year. Um, and um, um, Lennox Lemon, sophomore, has, has kind of picked up uh, when, when Zach's been un unable to go. And so those three guys have all done a nice job as well. And uh, our corners are coached by Bo Grunder and our safeties by Dan Hackenbrack. Senior quarterback Dewan Owens was back in the lineup last week. Dewan threw for one touchdown and ran for another. What do you like most about the way Dewan plays the quarterback position? Um, I mean, I, I, I like it when we score points offensively. So whatever, whatever it takes to do that, I like. Freshman kicker Mateo Herrera went four for four in extra point attempts. Tell us more about Mateo. Mateo's a freshman um, who's, who's been going while our, our main kicker has been out. Um, and uh, he's, he's done a nice job in a tough spot, you know, being a freshman. Um, so really, really happy with what he's been able to, to um, add to the table. Um, he's, he's, uh, he hasn't missed an extra point, which is great. Um, so really appreciate that kid, Mateo Herrera. Thanks, Coach. In a moment, we'll talk with a Tiger player. But first, this word from Reliable Heating and Cooling. There was a time when 10 miles to the gallon was acceptable. Today's 40 plus mile per gallon cars weren't even in the rear view mirror back then. Of course, this Linux air conditioner wasn't on the radar either. It's solar ready, the quietest, most energy efficient air conditioner you can own. It's time to live in the now. Call Reliable Heating and Cooling for the most advanced technology in heating and air conditioning. When you're ready to live in the now, call Reliable Heating and Cooling. Linux, innovation never felt so good. Thank you, Reliable Heating and Cooling. Joining me now is Senior Center Brady Jones. Brady, welcome to the show. Hello. First of all, congratulations on the win last week against St. John's. From your perspective, what did the team do well that led to the win? Um, we just we played our game, and we just didn't give in to their game. Like So they were just playing a little bit dirty, and we just weren't giving in to that. And so it led to a lot of like flags and a lot of yards for us, and they just kind of like gave up. So it kind of just helped us win. As you were growing up, do you remember when you first started playing football and who taught you the game? Uh, my first time playing football was with my dad and brother in, in my backyard. And my dad is kind of who taught me how to play. He was kind of my coach from uh, like fifth grade to eighth grade. So he's kind of just been my mentor for a coach, like for coaching. As a senior, you're seen as a leader on this team. How would you describe your leadership style? My leadership style, I, um, I'm not the most 
loud person, but I am definitely, like, I just, I feel like I have respect from people. I try to get respect from people. I just, I ask them, like, to do, like, if they're doing something bad, I just ask people to not do it, and it usually, like, works, so. You're starting, you're the starting center on the Tigers' impressive offensive line. What skills do you need to possess to be a good center? Um, you need to be able to listen. So, like, when coach is explaining something, you need to be able to listen for like, and be able to learn from that. And then you also need to, like, be able to, you have to have good footwork, like, good technique, good footwork. Um, yeah, I mean, you just need good technique and you just be able to listen and learn from your mistakes. Do you have a nickname? I do have a nickname. My nickname is, to my close friends, is Bard. And it's because in eighth grade, or seventh grade, I misspelled my name in music class. <laughs> and ever since then, it's just been Bard. Your team plays on the road at Fitch this Friday night. What do you expect to see from the Falcons' defensive front and the rest of their defense? Um, they're... Fitch, uh, they're pretty, they're pretty like fast up front. They're not as big, um, so I mean we're just gonna have to go play our game. Just go punch them in the mouth for four quarters. We always do. Thanks, Brady. Coach Moore will rejoin us after we take this time out on the Nate Moore Show. The Stark County Neighborhood Partnership Program presents the 2023 Celebration, Celebration of, of Neighborhoods. neighborhoods. This reception style meet and greet event will showcase a variety of different neighborhood associations between the cities of Alliance, Canton, and Maslin. That's right. This event will also have some special guests. Invited are the candidates running for the upcoming general election in November. This event is free and an excellent opportunity to meet new people and connect with others in surrounding neighborhoods. Join us on October 12, 2023 at Ed and Burt's Smokehouse and Event Center in Maslin. Doors open at 5.30 p.m. That's Thursday, October 12, 2023 at 48 2nd Street Southeast in Maslin. Hosted by the Stark County Neighborhood Partnership Program, a collaboration between Stark Community Foundation, Community Building Partnership of Stark County, and the Stark County Neighborhood Associations. For more information, please call 330-458-0962 or visit communitybuildingpartnership.org. STEM is everywhere, like here, behind the scenes of The Walking Dead. Cut, we got it. And for every moment like this, there's a crew of people using STEM to bring the dead to life. We had 30 minutes to make one of Norman Reedus's outfits look seven years old. When we break down clothes, we tumble it with trisodium phosphate, rock salt, and dish detergent. We stitched together images of our model and created a 3D set that could be walked through in a VR headset. It looked like you were actually standing in the room. There's so much technology involved in directing. We're able to turn 12 walkers into a thousand walker board. That idea became this design, which turned into this set, and that costume worn by that walker who was having a really bad day. STEM can create new worlds on and off the screen. What will you make with STEM? Get inspired at shecanstem.com. Welcome back to the Nate Moore Show. Coach, we just heard from Senior Center Brady Jones. Tell us about Brady and how he has impacted this year's team both on and off the field. Brady's a great kid. Um, really happy for the success that he's having. Um, he's, uh, and he's a great representative of us, you know, in, in the classroom, in the hallways. Um, and, and he's really putting together a really, really nice senior year uh, at center. He's been physical. Uh, he's finished blocks. Um, our, our center makes a lot of key calls for us on the offensive line up front, and uh, Brady's done a really nice job against some really good players this year. We are now in week number eight of the regular season. Can you give us another update on how the freshman and JV teams are doing? Um, 
Let's see. I, I think our freshmen are five and two. Um, and I, I think our JV is three and three, something like that. Um, let's see. Our JV recently took a trip down to Ironton and played a JV game down there. Um, got the win down in Ironton. Um, another 3-3-1 three, three because last week we tied Glenville. So there's no overtime in JV or really anything underneath the varsity. There's, there's no overtime. So we actually had a tie ball game uh, with Glenville. So 3-3-1. Three, three and one. And I think our freshman team is five and two. They beat Glenville last week, seven nothing. Um, so both doing well, you know, like like both teams. Um, freshman group's a really strong class. Um, sophomore group is is kind of small but mighty. There's not a lot of them, but um, we do have some really good players in that class. So I like both those groups. This week, the Tigers play their first road game of the season as they travel to Austin Town to face the, the Fitch Falcons. What can you tell us about their overall program and the long-running series Maslin has had with Fitch? Well, um, Austin Town Fitch is a very good program. Um, we've lost to them eight times uh, in 29 tries, I think it is, 28 tries. Six of those on the road at Fitch. Um, so, you know, going to Fitch has been um, has been tough at times in the in the history of the series. Um, we've got another good team this year. They're, they're ranked 11th in Division Two in Ohio. We um, have several Division One players, quarterback, the Toledo guy. Running back's a Ball State guy. They've got a defensive lineman going to Ball State. Um, they have two young players with a bunch of Power 5 offers. I think they're twins. Uh, one plays linebacker, one plays receiver, both like 6'5". Um, and they have a corner going to Pitt. Um, so they, they have a bunch of really good players. Um, Fitch teams are always tough. They always play hard. Um, so we've got a, a, another tough challenge for us this week. Tell us about their offense and some of their key personnel. Uh, well, they operate out of a, a spread offense, 10 and 11 personnel. Um, and, and the quarterbacks is, is really the key. He, he's, a, he's a really good thrower. Um, he's a really good runner as well. Um, doubles as a safety for him. Um, so um, he, he's, he's really the key to their offense. How about their defense? Defensively, they, they mix it up between odd and even fronts. Um, a lot of man coverage out of the defensive backfield. Um, you know, I told you they have the one corner going to pit, but, but both corners are really good. Um, I, I think that's definitely part of the reasons why there's so much man coverage. And, um, but yeah, they're very good defensively as well. We want to thank Coach Moore and Senior Center Brady Jones for joining us on this week's show. The Nate Moore Show is brought to you all season long by Reliable Heating and Cooling. I'm your host, Ripley Kemp. Thanks for watching, and as always, go Tigers! Hello, and welcome to the Stark County Humane Society. Today we're going to give you a few pointers when considering adopting a new furry friend. All animals here at the Stark County Humane Society are spayed, neutered, microchipped, vaccinated, dewormed, and if old enough, heartworm tested for our canine friends. Adopters will receive a free exam within two weeks of adoption at local veterinarian hospitals. We encourage all adopters to take full advantage of this. A one-time adoption fee is required for your new furry friend. When you adopt, you get an awesome adoption packet that includes treats for your new fur baby and savings for you. But this is not where the cost of adoption stops. Did you know the average cost of an animal like a new puppy or kitten can cost up to $500 annually? This includes annual veterinarian visits, 
preventative care, and everyday supplies like crate, litter, food, toys. But I hope this doesn't scare you away. Adopting an animal is a huge responsibility and a commitment. Please take the time to consider the cost of adopting a new pet into your family today. I hope to see you soon at the Stark County Humane Society. Please visit our website or visit us on social media for more information. Welcome to another edition of Swing. Our show features Tiger Swing Band director Jason Neal. We're on air with you every Wednesday night following the Nate Moore Show. Swing is being brought to you by Johnny's Music Shop. I'm your host Claire Palmer and with me is Mr. Neal. Welcome to the show Mr. Neal. Thanks for having me Claire. Last week's halftime show featured the annual homecoming ceremony. Tell us more about the band's role in that event. Well for homecoming each year we uh like to provide the, the background music, so to speak. Um, so we obviously play a, um, a background role in the event. Uh, we like to choose a ballad that's not too loud and too fast, so it doesn't distract from, from the, uh, the ladies who are being introduced. Um, you know, we chose, uh, I can't even remember the song we played right now, um, but, Let's see, it was the, from the Muppets show. We did the Rainbow Connection. Uh, you put me on the spot here. Um, so I thought the kids did a great job playing that song. I really like that arrangement. Um, it's a beautiful uh, ballad. And we, we always try to choose a different ballad. Um, I'm getting to the point where I think we may start to uh, rotate through some of those ballads so some of the kids uh, have played them before. Our seniors, when they were freshmen, we did a Muppet show, so that was actually a song that they had played when they were freshmen. So um, we enjoyed being part of that ceremony. Uh, we had two girls, uh, Arabella Collins and Sophia Grisak, that were on the court. Obviously, Arabella was representing the swing band herself, so uh, we were proud of those girls, and uh, we enjoyed the, the little bit of a break from learning a, a, a new routine, so it was nice to just stand there and play a song for, for the ceremony. Let's take some time this week to focus on your drum line. Which staff member oversees that group and what role does the drum line play in the band? Well Mr. Chris Nussbaum is our uh, percussion instructor and he's one of our junior high directors and he's worked uh, in Maslin longer than I have. Uh, so he does a great job with our drum line. Um, we have snare drums and tenor drums and bass drums and cymbals that make up our drum line. We have 16 students this year uh, in the drum line, and um, they do a great job not only providing the you know the rhythm and the beat for all of our songs, but also a lot of our stand beats and our cadences as the band mo moves around from place to place. But they fill a, a really important need throughout the game to keep the energy going in the in the in the stands. Uh, the kids have a lot of fun dancing to the cadences and the stand beats, and it saves the band the uh, the wind players from having to to play their instruments the whole night and, and really uh, you know, weaken their, their muscles and their lips so it saves their faces for halftime and, and for when we're on the field. Um, so we, we rely heavily on our drum line and, and they're doing a great job. From time to time, I see smaller groups of band members playing out in various public events. Tell us more about that. Well, we basically like to use our squad leaders to go out and play like you said, performances around the community. Um, it saves the whole band from having to, you know, come in all the time and do some of these extra events. Uh, we'll do a lot of that during McKinley Week. Uh, we did a lot of that, you know, uh, at the beginning of the season. Uh, we'll have our squad leaders, you know, play certain events like Seven Brew. When they opened up over on uh, Lincoln Way there, they called us and asked for a little band, and, and so we sent our squad leaders to that. Um, you know, we'll go to the Touchdown Club, to the Rotary, things like that during McKinley Week. And uh, it just is nice to have a small, we call them a pep band, but it's really our squad leaders. We'll have more with Mr. Near here on Swing, but first this word from Johnny's Music Shop. Band season starts here at Johnny's Music Shop, located at 2492 Lincoln Way East, Maslin, Ohio. 
Enjoy our name brand band instrument rentals with no credit checks and our large selection of woodwind, brass, string, percussion accessories, and band books. Get signed up today for private lessons with any of our knowledgeable instructors. And if you're in need of a fix, all repairs are done here locally in-house. Give us a call at 330-832-3000 and come be a part of our musical family. Thank you, Johnny's Music Shop, and welcome back to Swing. What circumstances in your life led you to choose a career in music education, and in particular, a high school band director? Well, that's a great question. Um, I can remember when I was in fourth grade, um, they sent a paper home asking, you know, do you want to join the band? And it was literally just a paper and circle the instrument. And um, my uncle had been a uh, trombone player and he marched in the Ohio State Marching Band and I, my aunt said, hey, you know, your uncle plays trombone and we've got a trombone lying around and, and so I, I circled trombone and little did I know that that would lead me on a path to, to where I'm at now, but um, I had such a good experience in band and enjoyed making music and particularly uh, in high school band, um, you know, doing the marching band. I remember doing a senior show when I was a senior in high school asking the director that we didn't have a senior show where I went to school so I asked the director if I could write a show and arrange some of the music and I just had a, a lot of fun doing that and ended up going to Ohio State and marching in that band myself and um, it just it seemed like something that was uh, a good fit for me I not too much I can describe it but it just seemed to really click for me and then I did my student teaching and just fell in love with the whole process of being able to help students have the same experience that I have had and, and really enjoy uh, being a part of a band and, and making music. So I hope that answers your question. I'm sure from time to time that the band struggles learning new music for a halftime show. What techniques do you use to help your students overcome those struggles? Well, we are a big proponent of uh, time and repetitions. And so I believe you can memorize anything if you have enough time and enough repetitions. And they have to be uh, skillful repetitions. You just can't go over something over and over. I mean, that takes more time. So teaching students uh, to what we call chunk the music. They take smaller sections of the music and repeat those sections until they can play it without the music. And um, sometimes you don't have a lot of time. We're doing this in a week or two. You've got to memorize this music. So. You are correct, they, they do sometimes struggle with that, but we continue to uh, give them repetitions in class, we give them repetitions in rehearsal after school, uh, but we do ask that they, they do a lot of repeating on their own. Uh, so you'll hear us talk a lot about time and reps to the students and how willing are they to go and put in all that time and put in those repetitions. So um, that's kind of the strategy that we use. Because we have our first away game of the season this week, what does your band schedule look like from the end of the school day up until the opening kickoff of the game? Mm -hmm. Yeah, week eight, first away game. It's kind of a, a little bit strange, but we're going to be rehearsing after school about 3.05, uh, going through our show for, for the night. We are um, then immediately going to be packing our dinners for the bus. So the students will go through the line, they'll get all their stuff for the, for the dinner that they're going to pack. Then they'll get into uniform, then we'll have our inspection, we'll load the truck, load the buses, drive over to Fitch, eat dinner while we're on the way. Uh, we'll get there. We do not have to do a pregame show. We'll, we'll get to watch Fitch's band do the pregame. And then uh, we'll be playing, obviously, in the stands uh, for the game, and then we'll do our halftime show. And finally, give us a preview of this week's halftime show at Fitch this Friday night. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we've chosen to do um, the show that we did for the St. Ed's game, week five. And that's our Danny Elfman tribute, who is a music and television composer. And, and the music from that show, again, is uh, the theme from the Batman movie, Simpsons, the Simpsons theme, and some music from Nightmare Before Christmas. So. A lot of fun, popular music. We're going to uh, kind of reprise that show. And uh, we, we thought that was a, a pretty good show to take on the road. 
Thanks, Mr. Neal. That will do it for this edition of Swing. Once again, Swing is brought to you by Johnny's Music Shop. For Mr. Neal, I'm your host, Claire Palmer. Thanks for watching, and as always, go Tigers. Most of us are engaged with the internet in one way or another every day. A fast, secure connection matters. It keeps us entertained, informed, engaged. MCTV cares about keeping you engaged, no matter what's thrown your way. Need an upgrade? Choose from a range of reliable options, including whole home Wi-Fi. MCTV. We go the extra smile.